welcome to Ellen Ruth's Soap. I'm Ellen and today we're making soap and it's going to be a little interesting. Uh, I have not soaked with this fragrance yet. It is called Eucalyptus Spearmint and it smells really nice. It's very fresh, very eucalyptus and spearminty, which I think is great coming into allergy season. If anybody out there is like me, oh my goodness, <laughs> me and allergies, uh, I wish we weren't as tight as we are. Um, but I have my notes on here. None means it doesn't cause discoloration, separation, speeding up trace, but it does cause rising. So we're gonna work with a rising fragrance and I will put it in after the colors are in so we can see how it behaves. Let's see if it rises. Sometimes fragrances that say somebody's had a rising experience or they left that as a review, they don't always rise. And other times they'll say it doesn't misbehave and they will rise. So, Let's do it together. Uh, I'm anxious to use this, it smells great. And so I'm thinking of Spearmint Eucalyptus, the colors that I chose to represent, I'm gonna use Olive Green Mica from Be Scented, because I thought that had sort of a minty appeal to it. And I'm gonna do a swirl with Bell Bottom Blue Mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. So these are gonna be my Spearmint and Eucalyptus swirls. I just thought they looked really pretty together and we'll do a hanger swirl and um, if everything's behaving. When you have a ricing fragrance, you can blend it out and it's still workable, but if the trace on it speeds up a little, sometimes the blending required to get rid of the ricing can cause a thicker batter. So if things are too thick for a hanger swirl, we'll maybe just do a drop swirl We'll just take it as it comes, all right? We're doing this together. I'm gonna to get everything pulled together and I will share the recipe that I'm using today down in the description box. Um, it's, it doesn't say description box anymore. It's like a little highlighted more, the word more. Click on that and uh, it should show you everything. Links to the equipment I'm using, the recipe I'm using, all the good stuff. Click around, you'll find it. And uh, I did wanna say, if you are watching my videos and enjoying the content on this channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss anything going on. I appreciate you being here. Let's get ready to make some spearmint eucalyptus soap. And we are back for soap additives time. And this is all of my oils. And again, the recipe is written with the quantities and percentages that I'm using down below. But what I've got here real quick is lard, coconut, palm kernel, cocoa butter, castor oil, and high oleic sunflower oil. So that is what's in the pot here. And let's go ahead and add my about, a, eh, I'll call it two teaspoons of colloidal oats. Again, I'm kind of loosey-goosey with my additives, about two teaspoons of kale and clay. I love my additives. If you've been with me for any amount of time, you know I love all the extra bells and whistles. And I think the oats are really good on your skin. I just think they're soothing if you're not allergic. And the clay, again, very soothing. I love how clay feels in the lather of a soap. So that's why I've added it in here. Let's get it blended up and then I'm gonna go get my cooled off lye solution. We are back with my cooled lye solution here, which does have cane sugar, tuss of silk, and some sodium lactate in there to help unmold. And I have my colors dispersed in just a little bit of uh, water, distilled water, so that they'll blend really easy. I've got my fragrance off to the side, and I did look up the reviews one more time just to make sure I was, you know, reading it correctly, and uh, this is a Bath & Body Works dupe fragrance, and man, it smells good. Uh, so one of the reviews said it, they had a little bit of ricing and it didn't cause acceleration. Another reviewer did not mention the ricing, but said they had a little acceleration. So this is gonna be a fun experiment. I do have my hanger here, my little uh, gear tie. This is the best little hanger tool because you can bend it to fit into whatever mold you have. Um, I get them in packs of two on Amazon and they are just a rubber coated gear tie. I love this thing. So it's off to the side in case everything's, you know, behaving well, that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I've gotta quit delaying and go ahead and get my lie in here. Sometimes when I'm nervous about something, I'll sit and talk about it a lot instead of just going ahead and adding in the lie. So let's get to it. And the goal here is to get this up to a nice emulsion, a very, very light trace, and then we'll split the colors off and get the fragrance in there and see how we do.
are back. It's the next day. I did cover this with my cooler and put it on a heating pad to try and force gel phase but I'm so happy with the colors. And I just added that little bit of glitter on there to kind of give it, I don't know, a minty. To me, it kind of looked refreshing. So that's why I threw that on last minute, but I'm loving it. I don't know if the camera's picking this up well. The colors are very, the lighting is hard to see the swirl. It's pretty, it's subtle. Let's get in here and see how those swirls came out on the inside. We're back with the lovely Olga, and I think she kind of goes along with the colors here. So let's get in here and see what we've got going on. All right, truth time. Ooh, pretty, my little end slice here. Loving that. Oh, these are very pretty. Let's talk about this fragrance that had the potential for ricing and all of that. I did not experience any issues, okay? Let's just say that it was workable, it was a nice medium, I would even say a slow trace for me, uh, and it was pretty liquidy when I poured it and I swirled a lot and I just had no issues whatsoever. It smells very nice. It's a beautiful fragrance. And I'm not seeing any um, discoloration halo around the bar, so I don't think it is going to discolor just as advertised. Pretty happy with this. And these colors are really lovely. So here is the little soap flower that I poured with the extra that I had for the top, I, I didn't figure out my ounces perfectly. I had a little extra, I never mind, I love these. These are all over my house, in bathrooms and by sinks and such. But this did not go through gel phase. I had this little flower sitting in the mold off to the side and the cooler went over this. And you can see a little bit of a difference in the color blue there and in the green. Let me turn it over here. So this is one of the reasons why I like to gel. This is a more muted sort of pastelish color and gelling will make a color a little more vibrant if you can pick that up. It's a subtle difference. It doesn't make or break the bank. This is perfect and beautiful, um, but I do tend to like gel phase. Another reason that I like gel phase is that I feel like the bars are a little firmer in 24 hours and it unmolds a little smoother and crisper. If you don't go through gel phase, you can let your soap sit for 48 hours or 72 hours. Certainly doesn't hurt the soap to sit longer, but um, it's a little bit firmer after a gel phase. Which, uh, if you've been with me for any amount of time, you know patience is not my strong suit. So having it firm up quicker is a plus for me. Oh, I just think these are beautiful and they smell so nice. I'm loving this recipe and uh, I have used it a couple of times before. It lathers beautifully and uh, these are these are making my day. I hope you're enjoying them too. <laughs> oh, love. All right, well, I am going to let these sit for several hours before I come in and do my beveling and stamping like I do. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. This was fun to make. I think they are lovely and this fragrance did not misbehave. I'm so happy to report that. I tell you what, I love it when that happens. <laughs> so I hope you give the recipe a try and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a wonderful day.